Now, most airplanes in the Microsoft Flight Simulator have two engines. Well, some have four, but none have eight. But this one does, everybody. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a plane that'll fly for a hundred years. What the hell's this? The B-52 Bomber by Boeing. It was introduced 73 years ago in 1952, and they are expected to serve into the 2050s. This is a plane that will outlive the lifespan of a human being. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it makes sense. 744 of these have been built, and they're huge. I don't know where the United States of America even puts them all. You know, normally I don't talk about military aviation a lot, but the Boeing B-52 is just such an interesting bomber airplane that I just really wanted to take a look at it. Now that we've got it released for the Microsoft Flight Simulator a few days ago by the developer of GKS, who have released some relatively good add-on planes in the past already, so this might be good. I mean, it is $40, which is a bit, you know, that's quite high on the price range. But in today's video, I'm really excited to learn now with this realistic model, how can a plane outlive a human life? So everybody, let's take a look. I've just downloaded this, um, and this is the cockpit, which obviously looks very 1950s-ish. Oh my gosh, shut up. We have eight instruments for the eight engines. We have, oh my goodness, Eight throttles for the eight engines. Can you imagine that? And we can already see the modeling is quite nice. Now, this looks like one of the most uncomfortable chairs, which is... Uh, that's a bit painful, especially considering that you'd spend a lot of time carrying nuclear bombs in this thing. This thing can fly up to 8,800 miles, 14,200 kilometers without aerial refueling, despite having eight engines. I don't know how that's possible. Anyway, I'm really excited about this. We can take a look into this relatively narrow airplane. We see circuit breakers model. They don't work, and the resolution is ass. Mm -hmm. What do we see here? A hammock stoid. I couldn't find any results on that online with the hammock does all i found is this picture from pirate tall ship hammock nah, maybe they can sleep in there and going further down the cabin is a bit disappointing because you can't go there it's uh, if you're a harry potter you might be able to unless we go into the drone mode which gives us a bit of a perspective of what else will uh is here. This seems to be like a secondary cockpit, which is probably just for operating the bomb stuff. Furthermore, you can see there is a ladder here where you can go down, where you can see uh, broken textures. Um, I don't know what would happen here. Maybe some people would be sit sitting down here. If we go further down the back, we can see the goofy landing gear, which we'll take a look at in a second. And here's, of course, where a nuclear bomb would sit here. The doors would open and someone would be doomed <laughs> a short time later. When we go down, we see the second landing gear. And this one is truly epically ugly. This plane is weird. Unlike any other Boeing plane, that's probably the reason it's got its weird nickname, the buff. Big, uh, ugly, fat, uh, let's call it feller. Uh, either way, this model looks all right. Let's go ahead and turn this airplane on and see if I can even do that. Okay, this is weird because it really has a layout of almost like a fighter jet. Anyway, battery on. Good. Let's see if I can already turn this plane on. So put this into start, which, hmm, it doesn't do anything. Why? Because this airplane natively does not have an APU, which I find so interesting. No, this airplane is not able to start up on its own. You'll need something called a cartridge. In order to do that, you have to go to the options here. And here we can get the starter cartridge right here. What the hell is that spelling? Ground start. Are you serious? You missed a D right there. Anyway, that turns on <laughs> an engine. I have no idea what's going on here, to be honest. Uh... All right, but engine number eight is turning on, apparently. And that seems realistic. And it's so funny how primal the technology is here in turning on this airplane. Basically, the cartridge is that a, an explosive is set off to start up the B-52 engines. Absolutely ridiculous. Wait, let's try that again. Engine cartridge, come on, there we go. And engine number eight, let's turn that back on again. Yep, this is not smoke. This is an explosion happening right here, which is making the engine spin enough so that they can start up. I'm not kidding. I have to find a way to quickly engage fuel here. How do I do that? Ah, so we have to open it right here, I think. The manifold, all right. So let's try that again. Engine number eight, start up. Yes, look at this. All right, come on, come on. You're good, you're good. Yes, and this is actually now revving. 
Yep, as you can see, that turns on relatively quickly, to be honest. Not bad at all. That's probably good because this airplane has seven engines. Maybe we can see if we can start up all of them at the same time and see what happens. Oh, yes. Look at that. Burning, burning, burning. That is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, wow. That took no time whatsoever. Just very on fire now. Good. Let's turn on the generators, which provide electricity. Fuel should be good. We've got loads of fuel tanks to activate. Oh, oh, oh off dead and set the pork and break. Oh my God. We're moved. We just moved a little bit. All right. Talk about that. Let's turn on the hydraulics right here and so we can turn off the fuel enrichment and we're good to go ladies and gentlemen now this airplane does not have reverse thrust to go backward actually yeah no kidding but what's really weird is um the landing gear design so the forward two nose gears uh, they spin around the uh, they seem to rotate to be able to actually steer the airplane on the ground and it looks absolutely insane i mean the old landing gear design is weird this plane was made to be very thin for some reason and so they couldn't put a proper landing gear, so they have these stabilizers here on the wing, and now we're stuck. And I can't move backward. Alright, I do have to say about this model, looks alright so far, but I feel like the sounds, this thing does not sound properly like a B-52 would sound, I imagine. You know what I mean? Anyway, this screen's supposed to turn on, because I don't know how to do that. We can just have it ready for taxi here. Apply that. There we go. That's a lot better. Could also, by the way, set up modern avionics. See, after all, yes, while this airplane has been flying for a long time, they did enhance the avionics of this plane. Uh, makes sense. Anyway, that doesn't work now. Maybe I have to reload this. Anyway, this here is this quite revolutionary screen because it appears to be actually touch screen. Now, by the way, this is definitely stolen from a Boeing 747, this radar right here. That's okay. Here we can enter in a flight plan, which works fine. I do wonder what this so-called video right here is. We're supposed to have a camera right here that's able to show like infrared, right? The flare. But I highly doubt that works. Neither does the contrast. Neither does even the brightness, apparently, which is interesting. So this is like a half baked, lukewarm avionics system, but that's not too important. Let's finally fly this plane. Did I just hear a takeoff alert? I guess this airplane needs flaps. We're supposed to be set here. There is uh, this flaps thing and it really only goes up and down there's only <laughs> there's only like two levels to appear but all right we're putting out flaps let's go ahead and get onto the runway by cheating because i couldn't be bothered all right and so now we're on the runway good let's go ahead and uh, fly this airplane which weirdly sounds a lot like the 7478 by the microsoft flight sim anyway the flaps have come out and they look really interesting look at this our nose wheel steering is working just like our stabilizer landing gear Full power, there we go. We've got a takeoff configuration warning still. Doesn't matter. I do wonder, what in the hell are those bell, bell, bells? What is that? Generally, no idea what they do. Are they just decoration? Christmas decoration. Now, we are building up airspeed, as you can see, and uh, knots seems to be a little bit broken because we're not really accelerating. Uh, hello? Why are we, why are we going back in speed? Uh, oh, and now we've been catapulted. Great! Hey, what in the flight dynamics is that? Let's go ahead and try that again. Now, this airplane, though, shouldn't really be too rubbish on short runways. It once flew to a very short runway, 1,500 meters in England. By the way, look at the range of this thing. Um, though the range is never realistic here in Microsoft Flights, the range is actually mostly a lot longer than the circle here. So let's go ahead and try Duxford. It probably shouldn't be an issue. Let's try this again. Maybe the flight model is like weirdly broken before or maybe i had the parking brake set on that might be a good reason now the takeout configuration warning is also gone and now we can accelerate a lot quicker sorry by the way the flaps are now at 40 that's maybe a little much but all is looking good this airplane is very immune to wing strikes i imagine look at this and we can now take off come on seems as though this airplane flies a very weirdly Come on, you can do it. Hello? How much more airspeed do you need? We've just completely overrun, although you were able to do this in real life. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, let's go ahead and put the landing gear up, which always looks very weird. See how it twists and turns the B-52 landing gear. Yeah, once again, very narrow airplane for a very big wing. Big wing really ensures long flight times, but the narrow fuselage doesn't make the landing gear very 
easy. Oh my god, this airplane, what in the fighter jet physics is this? Why is it always dark in England, by the way? Get red. Make it better lighting. All right, so we're down to zero knots of wind speed. And I don't know how, but this airplane is like insane. Oh, wow. Is that a realistic flight model? I couldn't be able to tell. It might be. And we've lost. Oh, we've completely lost the plane. Oh, wait, that's a, that's a spin. Yeah, I, this is like the problem. I've never flown this airplane in real life, obviously, and I have no idea about this, but is it supposed to be able to pull some serious aileron rolls? Like, that is serious. And wait, that's an so interesting stall behavior. Come on. I mean, honestly, this airplane does not have very big control surfaces. It's really only these interesting looking flaps here on the wings that aren't even big. Yeah, also the elevator surface is weirdly small, just as much as the rudder. And so it's weird then that this airplane is definitely more controllable than literally any other big plane that we have. Especially because Google AI says the airplane is supposed to be sluggish. It's supposed to be slow to respond to pilot inputs, particularly at low altitudes. So no, I, I don't know. You be the judge. I feel like I don't know if I can trust the flight model very well. I mean, look at this. This is just insane. And it looks it looks unreal for a plane this big. Yeah, which is a bit of a shame, to be honest. Maybe it is realistic and I'm just being stupid. But I mean, the interior model as well as the exterior model is amazing. The system death seems pretty interesting. By the way, look at the landing gear animation. Absolutely cool. Look at the landing gear. Absolutely nice model. And just as much as the cockpit, where we have loads of instruments here that seem to be custom made and seem to be custom designed and everything. So it's weird then that this airplane flies like a piece of paper. Either way, as I said earlier, this airplane, with all of its eight engines, have no reverse thrust. And stopping this plane on these very four landing gear definitely wouldn't be very easy at London City, for example. And so this airplane has a very special tool to stop. Let's go ahead and land this and find out about it. Now we see eight engines rolling back. <laughs> no, good thing is this airplane is very maneuverable. Quite helpful now on the crosswinds, I feel like. Whoa, we need more speed. We need more speed. What in the world? Okay. Oh, whoa. Hey, good thing is um, the nose landing gear of this plane is just as tough as the main landing gear. So it doesn't really matter if you touch down nose first. But this is where I want to pause the sim now because it's about time to put out the parachute. I just want to find out how. Uh, mm, uh, and so here it is. Here's the drag shot. There we go. We've just jettisoned it and we can... Oh, I've broken the animation a bit by pausing the sim. As you can see, the drag shot is coming out. So let's go. Oh, the engines were not idle. Well, let's see if we can stop now with the drag shot. This is extremely cool to have as you can see it comes out of like a little hatch here. Nevertheless, we crash into a construction zone. Happened. Uh, maybe we want to stop before the bridge. Oh, there we go. We stop. What's interesting is that the drag chute stays afloat. That might be because of the wind situation. Because if we turn off life, oh, it stays here. Maybe it's because the engine is turned on. Turn off the plane, which looks like this ah there we go ah yeah okay when the engines turn off the drag chute loses ballooning that's interesting so what can i say about this b52 add-on i think it looks great and it gives us a bit of a glimpse of how kind of weird this plane is i just don't think the flight model is very dynamic by the way you will not be able to fulfill your manly urge to drop a nuclear bomb into france because the third plane does not have weapons mainly because the microsoft marketplace store does not allow weapons because they think they they make you they make them sad they're so scary either way pretty all right add-on i wish it would cost like ten dollars less but other than that it's pretty okay so thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys tomorrow as always good night the special things goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.